In this video, we're gonna go through how you can write your own if statements in Power Query within Power BI or Excel. I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do this no code in Power Query, and also some advanced methods like nested if statements or multiple expressions in your if statements. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So Power BI is a tool that provides you with many different solutions to a problem. And in fact, I covered a video not so long ago going through how you can create if statements using DAX. So if you want to know how to do that in DAX, go and check out that video. But today we're going to go through how you can create if statements in Power Query, which is pretty much the same as in DAX, except the syntax will be slightly different. So just to recap, an if statement allows you to evaluate a certain expression, which returns a result that you control if the expression is true or false. Normally we use it in Power BI to say, create new columns, or control the value of a column based on certain scenarios. And we'll go through a couple of examples in a second. So this is the file that we'll be using today. It's a subset of this data set that we always use the Northwind uh, database, which is a fictional company that sells grocery goods internationally. We'll not go through the details too much though in this demo, because that's not really the focus of the subject today. So let's get started by looking at this data and these tables in the Power Query editor so we can start creating this if statement. So let's start this demo by going to the order details table, which just lists out all the orders that have been made and how many products were bought for each of those orders, along with the unit price and quantity for each of those products. Let's say in this table, we want to create a new column and this column should check if the unit price for this specific product in this specific order is greater than 30, then we want it to return or show us a high value order. Or, and if not, it should show as a low value. So to do this, we need to simply go to add column and custom column here, which will bring up the formula bar for us to write our if statement. So in this pane, you can name your column. So uh, we'll just name it uh, value. And here in the custom column formula is where you'll write your if statement. So let's start this statement by writing an if space, and then we'll follow it by our expression. So our expression must say if the unit price is greater than 30. Now to refer to a column within your table, you simply double click the available columns from this list here. So if you double click unit price, it will simply add that in our formula here. And then we'll need to continue our expression. So if the unit price is greater than 30, then we'll add the then statement, then, then space is, we'll type here, high value. We'll follow it by a space again, and we'll type else. Here we will type low value. So now the if statement is pretty much complete and we can break it down into three separate parts. The first is the expression right here. So this expression gets evaluated on each row of our table and it will check if the unit price in that row is greater than 30. If that row's unit price is greater than 30 or if it's true, the second part of this expression after the then is the high value, which is the value that it should return if that expression that we have set in an if statement is true. However, if the unit price on the row is not greater than 30, then it will take the value after our else here, which is the value here, low value. So let's see how that looks like. So if you hit OK, you'll see that now it will tag some rows as low value because obviously their unit price is lower than 30 and you will have some rows that have higher than 30, which is this one, and it will put a high value in there as a value. So what you'll notice is that the if statement that you just wrote 
becomes a part of the step which adds a new column into our table. You can edit your values here too, which is usually faster than bringing up the window pane and when you click the cog icon next to your uh, custom column step. However, if you're not the type of person that likes writing codes like this, and instead you prefer to work with a UI, and if your requirements are pretty simple in your if statement, then you can instead choose to create conditional columns instead. So to do that, you can simply need to click the conditional column when you're creating a new column instead of the custom column. And this will bring up a window, but instead of writing your queries or your if statements for your own, you will simply be following what is in this UI, which makes it a lot easier for you to kind of create your comparisons. So let's try to recreate what we've just done, but instead do it in this UI just so that you can see the difference. So it's the same here, we'll name the column uh, the same way that we did before. So we'll do value two. It doesn't really matter. And here we are simply just checking if the unit price is greater than 30, right? So the same thing that we did before. So we'll go and select if unit price. The operator is if it's greater than. We'll type 30 here as the value. And this is the expression. So now you will put on the then what is the output if this value is true, which here we will just simply put high value. And in the else statement at the bottom, you will just put low value for anyone, for any unit price orders that are below or equals to 30. So if we hit okay here, so you will see that this new conditional column will return the same values that the original custom column that we created uh, does. So it will be a like for like because the um, the syntax and the formula is almost the same. So you'll see that in this conditional column, instead of you having to write the Power Query formula, Power BI creates this formula for you and hides that formula writing in, within or underneath this user interface, which makes it a lot easier if you're creating some simple if statements. So if we go back to the conditional column pane, you'll notice that in our outputs on the then and else, we wrote the outputs manually, which is you just type it there, or you can base it on a value of a certain column. So let's say, for example, uh, in this case, if the value of the unit price is not greater than 30, we want to show the unit price of it. So we want to just return the value of the unit price. So in the else statement, instead of having to write the value manually, we can simply select a column, which will return a value of a column for us, if it's not greater than 30. So if you hit OK, you'll see that the difference on that, so you'll see that it will return a high value if it meets the expression. And if not, it will just return the value from that column, which is 14 or 9.8. So in this example, we have a number of comparators and operators available for you. So here is the list. So for example, equals, doesn't equal, greater than or less than. So when you select an operator here, this conditional column automatically generates the formula that you see at the top here. So the greater than is just this, uh, this greater than sign. Um, which translates the operators for you. But there might be cases where you want to write them yourself. So this is how each of them look like. So this is obviously greater than and less than is like this. Greater than and less than would be followed by an equal sign. Equals would be simply just an equal sign just to check if the unit price is equals to um, 30. And not equals would be uh, this sign, which is just the less than and greater than sign combined together. There are also different operators available to you based on the type of column that you choose to select in your conditional column. So for example, let's go to the categories table here, which is just categorizing what products we have um, into certain categories here. And let's try to create a conditional column in this table. So let's say if the category name is equals to beverages, then we'll just simply return the beverages. Otherwise, we'll just keep it empty. So just to keep it simple, right? If you hit OK, it will simply just return us. Um, well, we didn't type beverages there. It will just give us the beverages 
uh, otherwise it will just keep it null. Now if we go back to this conditional column uh, window, you'll notice that the operators are not quite the same as the one that we were comparing to earlier. So before, we were comparing against numerical values. So it's giving us options like less than, equals, um, or greater than. Whereas in this case, because the category name is a text or a string field, it gives us different operators that are related to uh, string type operations like equals, uh, actually no, this is already in the numbers, but begins with, ends with, contains or does not contain. These are very text specific operators that you can do with strings. And what's great about this is, for example, if you do contains and you don't know how to write it in Power Query, you can simply just play around with these operators. And if you hit OK here, you will see that it will automatically choose the right type of function for you. So in this case, it's just checking if the text contains beverages here. So you didn't have to write it yourself, which is great if you're not looking to create something too complex and um, it will be written for you automatically. So conditional columns allow you to easily perform if statements like this. However, if you want more complex expressions like let's say checking two expressions at the same time, you won't be able to, or at least not easily, because you're limited to what the UI provides. For example, let's go back to our order details here. And let's say we want to create a new custom column that checks if the unit price is greater than 20 and the quantity is greater than 10. If both of these statements are true, we want the new column to return high value. You'll notice that because we have two expressions instead of one, you simply can't do that in a conditional column like this because you will only have one column or one expression at a time and they need to both be true in order for this to work. Um, now, while you're limited to what you can do in the conditional column, you don't have the same limitation in the custom column. So let's try to do that ourselves here. So to make it easier, I'm just gonna delete everything that we've done so far. We're gonna create a new custom column here. I'm just gonna name, actually it doesn't matter what the name is. So if we start with an if statement and uh, we're checking the unit price. So if the unit price is greater than 20 and we'll follow this up with an end operator which is how we are going to be able to string up two expressions in this same expression so if the quantity is greater than 10 we said then we'll put it as a high value else it will be a low value if you hit okay there we go so you will see that in our if statement here, we have two expressions that it evaluates. It checks if both of these uh, expressions are true and only then it will give us the value in this then part of our expression, which is the high value. So in this case, if you look at uh, line five, it's checking that the unit price is greater than 20 and the quantity is greater than 10. Another option that you have is using an OR, which is simply just replacing the end to an OR. Essentially just checks if either of the expressions are true, then the value in this uh, return that we have will be true. So if we just leave it like that, you'll notice that now we have a lot more high values because it's just checking to make sure that one of, at least one of these expressions that we have are true. Another thing that you can do in custom columns but not in conditional columns is the ability to control and add expressions to modify the results of your return values. So for example, in this case, we what we want in this custom column is for any of our values that are returning high value, we want to calculate their total sales. So instead of showing high value, we want to get the total sales by multiplying the unit price by quantity. Now, you can't do that in conditional column, but you can do it here by simply modifying our uh, formula. So if we go back to the formula bar here, and here we can simply replace the high value result here. Instead of high value, we'll add unit price multiplied by quantity, like this. So you'll see that for any rows that are low value just returns us the value, the low value. 
and for any rows that fit this category either the unit price is greater than 20 or quantity is greater than 10 it will simply calculate the total sales for us so multiplying 14 by 12 and that's really it for this video I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with how to write if statements in Power Query. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.